Masters Top 4. This is our very first Top 4 streamed featured match here. Andrew Hedrick versus Kaiwin Kavave. And we're kicking things off on Andrew's side of the field. Of course, 75 minute clock for both of these players to make sure that all of these uh, turns are played out here and we get a final conclusion to this match. So we'll see if Andrew Hedrick can uh, take things down again with a potential 2-0 against a Gardevoir player, but I believe in Kaiwin Kavave here operating with that Gardevoir EX all the way into our top four. We're starting off with a Comfey in the active position here for Andrew Hedrick, going into the deck with a Nest Ball to get a basic Pokemon out of the deck onto the bench. But of course, assessing all of these cards, gonna get the bad news that a couple of key cards are stuck in the prize cards. Colrus's Experiment, two of them in the prize cards. That's the bread and butter of this deck. It allows you to get those cards into the Lost Zone um, and into your hand as well, advancing the rest of your plays for the late game and trying to move fast through this and gain resources through those Colrus's Experiment. But there's not going to be any uh, beakers being filled up here just <laughs> yet, Pablo. We'll have to see what the rest of this beginning hand looks like for Andrew Hedrick, but we'll see if it gets a little clunky. Potentially, it's nice that Comfe is in the active position, able to flower select for Andrew with the Radiant Greninja being the active Pokemon for Kaiwen. I'm going to go with that Iron Hands, that big threatening Pokemon that really can apply a lot of pressure to the Gardevoir players. Every time they attack, they're going to have something that's heavily damaged, usually unless it's a Gardevoir EX, so that amp you very much can be extremely threatening. Now, we saw Andrew, the first thing he did was put the Pokemon at the front to check which resources he had available. Then he did quite a few passes through the deck, but I'm not sure you immediately check how many Colruses you prize. Now, almost playing Colrus Experiment, despite going first, you can see he's thinking so far ahead oh, that nice. he already thinks he's in his second turn. Yeah, exactly. A little too far ahead <laughs> here, but you got to map out all those turns. Uh, both those pokey stop are also in the prize card too, so definitely just still taking note of what is in there for future turns. One card in the lost zone now off of that flower selecting. Another comfy hit in the bench now for Andrew Hedrick as well as a nest ball. Yeah, probably going to be able to establish the Greninja, maybe draw a few extra cards. Now, the one thing you know against Gardevoir is that there's a lot of Ionos happening now. I love grabbing this Iron Bundle that immediately gives you protection against any Flutter main shenanigans, but Andrew having that Colrus in his hand is really good. Kaiwen already knows that he has it because Andrew almost played it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's could true. be a that's little tell. Like, there. If Kaiwen had, has the choice between an Iono and Arvin, having that knowledge could actually encourage him to choose to play the Iono instead. That's a very good point there, Pablo. That lightning energy going to be placed onto the Iron Hands EX, a pass over. Now we're on the first turn for Kaiwin here. Going second in the Pokemon TCG it does allow you to both attack and play a supporter card. So we do see those options available for Kaiwin, but not before a nice little snack here, Pablo, in a buddy buddy poppin'. And of course, that's going to search out any basic, two basic Pokemon that are 70 HP or less here for Kaiwen. We just saw Gardevoir being played, uh, a Gardevoir mirror match in our top eight stream featured match. So we're going to uh, be familiar with the Pokemon here that we're going to be seeing in those Ralts. Yep, that Body Body Puffin getting to Ralts, pretty essential for this deck to start working. We also see Kaiwen being very thorough, but interestingly enough, the first thing he checked seems to be the energies, right? Which is a little different from Andrew. We all have our different ways to go about checking the valuable resources that we need for each and every game. Seems like he's going to be going back into a deck, which probably means he's going to be playing the Arvin instead of the Iono. There it is. So he did have the Iono in his hand, could have taken away that call risk, but he values guaranteeing those double Kirlias up as soon as possible, as well as that other Body Body Puffin to protect the bench with yeah. Manaphy and get that other Ralts going. Hey, I'll tell you, you know, we were talking, Pablo, about how I always call Gardevoir like the bullet train of decks because once you get that set up, it is almost unstoppable. So I, I totally understand here, Kaiwen wanting to just 
go with this consistency uh, here for his own side of the field versus the disruption that he potentially could have provided over to Han Andrew Hedrick there. That technical machine evolution slapped down onto the Radiant Greninja just needs that colorless energy attachment, which the psychic energy will fulfill here for that TM. It's going to be discarded here in a second from Kaiwen, but it did allow for those two Curlia to be searched out of the deck from that evolution and evolved into for the next turn for Kaiwen. And that's what's going to kick off these refinements, drawing into these cards, future Gardevoir. A ton of things are unlocked for the deck for Kaiwen after that. So we're back over to Andrew Hedrick after that techno technical machine is out of there. Colrus's experiment being played down immediately here. We're going to see these five cards. Three of them are going to go into the hand for Andrew Hedrick and two of them into the loss zone. Yeah, Colrus is very, very key. And very special here for Andrew with two of them being prized as well. Now, one lost vacuum does hit the Lost Zone, does have another copy. So there is a world where maybe uh, Andrew can get to seven cards in the Lost Zone. That Pokestop definitely helps. That's huge. Ooh. Two of them being prized, but that Pokestop will allow him to find that Mirashki that he desperately needs, perhaps. Oh my gosh, no. look at that, though. Two switch cards are the items found off the Pokestop. We rolled and a water energy is also going into the discard here. So yeah, not found there, Pablo, so sad, but going into the second flower selecting here for Andrew Hedrick. Yeah, flower select does not find that Mirage Gate. I think Andrew now with five cards in a loss zone could have utilized that lost vacuum and could have actually used Ampu very much, but he ended up whiffing a single card, Shelby, to pull this off. No. And it's gonna be forced to pass here. Ah, uh, yeah, you hate to see it, Pablo, but that's exactly what we're seeing. Unfortunately for Andrew Hedrick, just a pass back over to Kaiwen. And like, I, like I'm talking about the bullet train here, Pablo, the more turns you give it, mm -hmm. the scarier it gets. And Kaiwen is going to get another turn here to set up with that pressure not being established from Andrew Hedrick's side or those prize cards being taken either. So Kaiwen, let's see what this turn has in store as far as here. Let's take a look at the hands. We see an Arvin here, I believe. Was that also the pretty Screamtail? <laughs> I believe so, yeah. There's yeah. a technical machine devolution I as mean, well. This is blinged out. Yeah, this Even is the a shiny fully... Drifloon, whoa! <laughs> yeah, fully blinged out deck here for Kaiwen. Alternate arts, reverse foils, everything available to him as he's going to be able to find more energies, refinement those away, yeah. and get going. Might see Kaiwen take the first prize card, which is honestly not very usual in these sort of situations. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking that as well, Pablo. A little bit odd to see here, but these cards all falling into place here for Kaiwen. That Arvin searching out that Earthen Vessel as well as that TM being discarded to the Earthen Vessel to get those energy out of the deck. Those two basic energy here now for Kaiwen. They're in the hand here, but not for long. Concealed card's going to discard one of those energy into the unfair stamp, I think as well as a super rod there for Kaiwen off of that concealed cards. Two more cards here into the hand with refinement after another discard. Bravery charm, we're seeing another refinement. Cards are flying here, Pablo. We see uh, the monkey Dory yep. as well as another card I did not get to see. I'm pretty yeah. blind, though, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I also couldn't tell what the other card was along with the Monkey Dory, but that Monkey Dory is a pretty nice find. No Darkness Energy quite yet. There is a Cresselia. I don't know if there's a Gardevoir EX in the hand. I think there is because it's the very pretty art one as well. So I think we're going to see Kaiwen be the aggressor at this point. Now, Kaiwen would have ideally liked to attack with the Fluttermane, not only taking a knockout, but denying any future flower yeah. selects from happening potentially. We do see the card of Oriax hit the field. We're going to get all those abilities marked for you, the viewers. And we're yeah. going to see that Cresselia be the card chosen to be the aggressor. Yeah, that giant coin is just signifying that these abilities have been used here. Now what we're seeing is this Psychic Embrace off of this Gardevoir EX. That's the ability of its own. Accelerating Psychic Energy from the discard pile here for Kaiwen. Of course, for each Psychic Energy, you do have to tick up two damage counters that you place the Psychic Energy on that Pokemon. But the Moon Glow Reverse from Cresselia is going to move those two damage counters off of each of the Pokemon that get them onto Andrew Hedrick's field. So that's exactly what we saw here. Moonglow Reverse moving that 60 damage onto the Iron Hands EX for Kaiwen Kababa. And now we're over to Andrew Hedrick.
Now there are five cards in the Lost Zone right now. Kaiwen does have the Lost Vacuum to remove this Bravery Charm and be able to take two prizes with Ampu very much. Although those six damage counters that were just placed here does put it in range of a Gardevoir EX return KO. And the one thing that these new Turbo Lost Box decks lack is a Dark type attacker to deal with Gardevoir EX. There is no way for them to knock it out in a single hit. Yeah, so that's true. Hedrick has all the tools he needs right now could also potentially switch card and heal the damage Ooh, from yeah. the Iron Hands. There's like I think a million switch cards all in hand. Four. I think yeah. he has all four switch cards exactly. available. Oh Just gosh, use one, right. he has the other three. There's a healing, Ooh, so baby. very interesting play Love right that. here available for Hedrick and did find the Mirage that he was lacking off of the Pokestop just now. So Yeah, that's cool to see for sure. Switch carts. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't always see that extra effect that it has, but it does allow that heal of the 30 damage there off of that Iron Hands EX. Now it is down a couple of damage counters that Kaiwen worked over uh, with that Moon Glow Reverse. We're also going to see the secondary flower selecting from Andrew Hedrick for some more cards in there. Lost Zone is up to seven now, Pablo. Yeah, we already saw that, and it actually hit the switch. There's three switches in the Lost Zone that were selected to be sent there by those flowers, which is, like, very peculiar to see. Yeah. Now we are going to see the Mirage Gate. We are going to have the Iron Hands ready to Aww, go. Oh, yeah. With three switches down, I don't know if you want to spend all four switch cards in a single turn to yeah. heal the Iron Hands, so... Hedrick might be content to leave it here and then force Kaiwen to find the Monkey Dory and find the Darkness Energy to actually get the return KO. Did find the Prime Catcher as well, though, so could Prime Catcher mm. and knock out a Curlia instead of knocking out the Cresselia. He has both options. It'll be interesting to see what he decides to go for. Yeah, I'm interested to see it too. We'll have to see what happens for Andrew Hedrick after this nest ball, of course, bringing out Sableye now onto the field. Uh, yeah, our loss zone up to seven. That's what activated that Mirage Gate, allowing Andrew to search out that Psychic and the Water Energy from the deck here, two different types of energy cards from the Mirage Gate. As soon as you hit seven in the loss zone to power up that Iron Hands EX for the Ampu very much attack here. Two switch cards available, Prime Catcher available. I think Andrew's debating, do I go after the active? Do mm -hmm. I just commit to knocking out a Kirli and denying those Gardevoirs, which are so important? He's eyeing up the Lost Vacuum, so I think we're going to see an Ampu very much onto this Cresselia here. Yep, just debating it here now for Andrew Hedrick. Going to take a quick look at Kaiwin's uh, discard pile first, maybe before making that decision. You know, these players do get 75 minutes to take a breath, Look at things so that we are able to see the top level gameplay here from our players, especially when these these uh, matches are so important here. This is our top four. Ooh. And Andrew Hedrick is actually going to use this switch card to heal up this Iron Hands EX, promoting the Iron Bundle now into the active position. And yep, here we go. Switch or Prime Catcher is going to bring up one of these Curlia. As you said, Pablo, fully healed. Healthy Iron Hands EX now ready to amp you very much. Not one prize card as you usually see off of one of those knockouts, but the amp you very much. Two hands slapping around that Curlia. It's going to take <laughs> two prize cards as well. Yeah, and Andrew does free up one of those choruses that were locked in the prize cards. Now, usually you expect an, a follow up Iono, so it's probably going to go to the bottom of the deck. But Kaiwen now needs to respond to this Iron Hands and with the double switch cards that nullified all the Moonglow reverse damage that was placed on it beforehand. So, Kaiwen in a lot of trouble will need to find probably Drifloon plus the Bravery Charm and enough energies to deal with Iron Hands. Another important thing that Andrew did this turn is he targeted the Kulia that did not have energy. Right now, Kaiwen needs four Psychic Energies to power up this Drifloon. Oh he can yeah, unlock good. one by retreating, Move. but this energy and this energy is currently Stop. locked in play so this makes it harder for Kaiwen to have a response and if Iron Hands is able to survive and attack again that's gonna be really rough and with the monkey Dory getting played there's no space that's for Drifloon bench. now and through Iron Bundle I don't think there's anything stopping Iron Hands from taking the prizes unless this Kirlia ends up evolving into the second card of war so a lot of things at play here we'll have to see what Kaiwen has planned for us here yeah, that is huge for you to point out there, Pablo. And those energy 
so, sort of being stuck here on uh, the field for Kaiwen. You want those in the discard pile so that you can re-accelerate them and sort of manipulate your field as far as what is getting energy attached to, what is getting damaged from those damage markers from the Psychic Embrace, and then where can I move them to or what can I do with that here with the Monkey Dory, with the Moon Glow Reverse, with the damage uh, counters needed to amplify your damage output from these Pokemon like Screamtail or Drifloon. But all of that comes with the acceleration of the psychic energy, which you can't have if it's on the board. Unfair stamp being played here from Kaiwen, thanks to that knockout on the last turn. Going to be five cards to the hand for Kaiwen, only two for Andrew Hedrick. That's one way to limit the hand a little bit for Andrew as far as the options go for the future of these turns. Yeah, no, Kaiwen finding pretty ideal cards that Earth and Vessel allows him to search for that darkness energy that will be established onto the Monkey Dory and will allow Kaiwen to two hit KO this um, Iron Hands and take the KO mid turn next turn if he ends up going with the Guard of War EX this turn. I think that's what he's planning. He does have a few options to potentially use the Cresselia again, which does have the Bravery Charm attached to. And I guess with that, he does have the protection from the Iron Bundle. He could just promote Cresselia again and that's a Pokemon that cannot be amped to very much unless Andrew finds another copy of Lost Vacuum. Do you think he has it with two card hands? Ah. Difficult. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Monkey Dory going to uh, translate that 30 damage that was on the Gardevoir after accelerating those energy onto Andrew Oof. Hedrick's field, as well as that Gardevoir EX move uh, into the Iron Hands EX. Horrible hand here for Andrew, a buddy what buddy puffing a water and a comfy, nothing mm. to help you draw cards. You can't find Radiant Greninja off of this artisan because it has a rule box. Exactly. So no way to draw cards, no way to find resources, no way to find the lost vacuum at this point. And with no switching cards, as Andrew is down three switches in the lost zone. I think three switches, three switch cards at least in the discard pile, along with the prime catcher. Very few ways left for Andrew to actually move his Pokemon around. Yeah, that is so tough to see. Purple Pokemon in those Comfey, but they are uh, not refinement Pokemon. They're flower selecting Pokemon. So we're not just going to be seeing discarding to draw cards as we see on Kaiwin's side. Those Comfey are uh, only, only able to draw into some cards for you if they're in the active and selecting some flowers. But We'll have to see what happens here. Yeah, the Pokestop being taken away in the last turn as well for that Artisan instead being played down onto the field. Everything has shifted here as far as far as where our players are competing. We're in a nice little field now with a windmill instead of playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> now, there are one Switch and one Switch card available. This Iron Bundle could allow Andrew to attack into the Cresselia, but even an arm press is not enough. It's Cresselia currently has 170 yeah. HP. So unless Kaiwen makes a misstep here, which seems like he won't be doing, now this does set up the Cresselia to be knocked out later by the Lost Vacuum, which could prove useful, but Kaiwen very prepared for this. <laughs> Andrew's just going to double check on the HP and yeah. he's going to find the bad news that there's 160 damage, 10 damage short from the knockout. Yeah, that is sad to see indeed, Pablo. Unfortunate there, but that Cresselia is still alive here on Kaiwen's side of the field, ready to go thanks to that nice little bravery charm attached. Yep, huge bravery charm. Available for Kaiwen. We're going to start with the refinement. We have the Monkey Dury to transfer damage from the Cresselia to the Iron Hands to be knocked out in between turns or during the turn, rather. Yeah, That's exactly that. what Kaiwen does. I feel like people are following my arrows pretty well today. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too, Pablo. Maybe that's just great placement of arrows from your part. <laughs> but that does mean Kaiwen Kavabe is going to take those two prize cards. Iron Hands finally going down. And it was, like you said, sort of in, in between those turns, during, I guess. No, during I mean, the yeah, turn, right? It is during the turn, yeah. yeah Kaiwen so can I guess still retreat, attack, play a supporter, right? Still many things to be done here. And this will allow yeah. Kaiwen as long as he attacks this turn, which I don't see any reason why you wouldn't, we'll be able to get ahead in the prize race that Iron Hands was very swiftly dealt with yeah, by exactly. Kaiwen. 
Swiftly indeed. Now our players are four to four prize cards tied up right now. This boss's orders, that gorgeous artwork, let me just tell you, bringing up the Sableye into the active position here for Kaiwen as well. Yeah, oh, Kaiwen. yeah, Andrew Hedrick's just looking sad. Yeah, I mean, Kaiwen is eliminating one attacker. The Sableye is now gone as well. One. The Pokestop discarded the Cramorant, so all the attackers that uh, Hedrick would like are currently in the discard pile. The only one that's missing is Greninja, but Manaphy says, hey, hey, Greninja, you're not useful either. Exactly. Yeah, that Manaphy's pr protecting the bench here. Kaiwen Kavabe eliminating these attackers one by one from Andrew Hedrick's field Ooh. as well. Oh, the, that Blood Moon Ursaluna EX now hitting the Lost Zone for Andrew Hedrick, bringing us up to eight. We're going to go into another Flower Selecting here. Two cards, one goes to the Lost Zone, one goes to the Hand. It's the Super Rod versus the Nest Ball here for Andrew. Such rough decisions here for Andrew. I think he's going to be forced to keep this Nest Ball if he wants to do something. But no, chooses to value the Super Rod a little bit more this time around. But unfortunately, with Body Body Puffin, he will not be able to search for any of the attackers. He can Artisan, right? Potentially yeah. can actually, if he finds a Mirage Kid here, could actually still use Sableye this turn by searching it out and then using Mirage Gate to power up. Did he retreat yet? Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm actually not sure. It's so many things right happening. there, right there. Yep, yep, you're right. There we it go. has already retreated. <laughs> so actually, there's not going to be an attack happening this turn. And this Blood Moon or Saluna, I feel like that's how you can deal big damage. That's how you can uh, potentially make up for this deficit whilst putting up a Pokemon that resists a lot. But Andrew really valuing those Super Rods, making sure that he has access to Sableye, access to Kremit. We'll have to see what he can actually piece out here. Yeah, I mean, it makes complete sense. Their Super Rod is so valuable here for Andrew Hedrick to recycle these resources. Two of those Pokemon being put back into the deck, as well as a Psychic Energy uh, from that Super Rod. Back into the deck, Iron Bundle is going to be drawn out from that Artisan now that is out on the field. Yep, Iron Bundle, though, not too useful at this point. It's just a little robot. Yeah, I think we're just going to see a pass here from Hedrick. I don't know if there's anything else he can actually do. Really favored those Super Rods cannot attack had already treated so much that he wasn't able to and i mean the best thing he could have aspired to was maybe a cramorant hit onto the Gardevoir, which didn't really accomplish much anyways well we're back in legends here with that hisuian heavy ball quick look at the prize cards from kaiwen's side just to use it judges are going to shuffle these out or probably lay them back out for kaiwen usually if there's a basic pokemon in there you can draw it out replace it with the hisuian heavy ball and put it straight into your hands but no targets there Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to be discarded now for Kaiwen. Those prize cards are going to go back, laid out as well. But where are these turns going from here, Pablo? Where do you think Kaiwen is going to take this turn as far as what the hand is looking like and what we're thinking is going to happen here? I mean, we have a full bench at the moment for Kaiwen. Yeah, I mean, Kaiwen just saw the Sableye go get put back into the deck, so he's going to try and prioritize getting not only energy off the board, but also making sure that he gets damage on the board so that Sableye cannot do too much. He could just attack with Gardevoir. He knows it's not threatened. I think at this point, he must realize there's no darkness energy. The Gardevoir EX can just take another knockout. Monkey Dory can transfer three damage counters to one of these Comphase as well. So Cresselia could heal further damage too. So a lot of things that Kaiwen yeah. can do to get ahead, two price lead, I'm starting to think it's an unsurmountable climb here for Hedrick. I got to think so too, Pablo. It is definitely looking grim, unfortunately, for Andrew Hedrick. That monkey Dory going to bring those uh, damage counters onto that Comfey on Andrew's side of the field. A quick retreat here from the Gardevoir EX. Uh, pricey cost of the two energy, but that's pretty easy peasy when you're playing Gardevoir because you just reaccelerate some energy and you're cracking here. Arvin going to go back into the deck for Kaiwen, getting another item card and a tool card out. Yep. That Chrysalia with a Bravery Charm has really been the MVP here for Kaiwen, taking the hit from the Iron Hands. And all that damage is now being transferred with Monkey Dory along with the Moon yeah. Reverse, which is like really double. good. And I mean, Kaiwen's going to probably put enough uh, damage or energies on the board to knock out the rescue board. Confe, uh, Kaiwen very aware that there's a lot of switching cards gone for Hedrick. So I generally think that's a big advantage he can give himself at this point in time. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, definitely keeping track of your opponent's resources is so important. I guarantee you Kaiwen is uh, assessing every single card that's both played and lost zoned. So keeping track of the discard pile, what resources Andrew Hedrick is lacking so far in this deck, and every single exploit that Kaiwen potentially has here to deal to this match is so important. Uh, a lot of shuffling there. Kaiwen also almost dropped his deck. Uh, so we have to continue shuffling there. Hasn't used refinement, I don't think, yet. Going to be very thorough. I think Kyron realizes that he has a really big advantage at this point. Just wants to make sure he keeps that up and is trying to come up with how could Hedrick potentially uh, come back into this? What weakness do I currently have on my board yeah. that would allow him to have this opening? Well, these damage counters are being ticked up here on this Cresselia. Two more damage from that Psychic Embrace energy being placed down. That Psychic energy. Wow, I just caught a look at these energies, too. I mean, I didn't even notice that before, Pablo. Those are beautiful. Yeah, they're from the hard gold soul silver set. Yeah. Those energies are like 15 years old at this point. Now we do <laughs> yes. see the snipe with the Munglo reverse denying the Comfy. And Kaiwen could now pull off a double Monkey Dory play. Uh, transferring oh. enough damage counters here and then knocking out the active to win. This game is on Kaiwen to lose at this point. I exactly. can't see how Hedrick is going to make a comeback here. Yep, we've we've brought it all the way down to this point. Two prize cards left for Kaiwen to take to take home this first game in our Masters Top 4 featured match here. Andrew Hedrick starting off the turn. And yeah, it's looking it's looking grim, Pablo. But hey, you gotta play it out completely. 75 minutes for both these players, so you have to do everything in your possible uh, control to just play till you lose, pretty much. Radiant Greninja, concealed cards, gonna discard that water energy, draw into two additional cards for the turn. Andrew Hedrick's hand here. There's a Mirage Gate, buddy, buddy, popping. What else was in there, Pablo? Uh, I believe there's the Iron Thorns, which maybe the Iron Thorns EX could be the way that Andrew could make a comeback. I mean, sure. he, if he found Roxanne and was able to uh, take down the active along with denying resources and shutting down that Psychic Embrace, maybe that's what he's planning. He did just keep the energy over a Colrus, so he can attack this turn. He has his last switch, he has a Mirage Gate, he has a Super Rod, so he could see the Iron Thorns take a KO and deny Psychic Embrace during the next turn, but Kaiwen has a huge hand, will still have refinement, can still transfer damage counters, any that he's able to place, and a simple boss's orders would take that effect away, because it's only, uh, initialization only works when Iron Thorns EX is in the active mm -hmm. spot. Exactly, yep, initialization, Iron Thorns EX, uh, a bit of a surprising card to show up frequently on our stream here this weekend, but it's in the hand right now for Andrew Hedrick. Buddy Buddy Poffin going to be played at first here. That is the entire deck, folks, that Andrew Hedrick is looking at right now. We have thinned down to this point. This is what you see with these Lost Box decks. They're uh, putting a ton of cards into the Lost Zone, gone forever, never to be retrieved again. A ton of cards in the discard pile and then building up these huge hands as well. So the deck's looking pretty thin here. Just going to get a quick look at the resources left for Andrew Hedrick after that, uh, that look. And then we'll see what the strategy is that Andrew decides to go with for this turn. Yeah, it seems like he's not going to go in with the Iron Thorns at all. He's just going to try and go in with the save light, get a KO onto the Curly, perhaps. That Lost Mine is activated. There are 11 cards in the Lost Zone at this point in time. Can't get a two prize knockout, which is what he would love to be able to pull off at this point in yeah. time. All right, well, we're activating this lost mine, just a single psychic attachment. And of course, 10 cards in the lost zone as well activates this move. 12 damage counters that Andrew Hedrick is able to put down onto Kaiwen Kababe's board. Yep, I think that's 11 on the Monkey Dory, so one damage counter left. Is that ever relevant anywhere? Maybe on the Cresselia, maybe on the Manaphy. I don't think that damage Ooh. counter will be too, too significant at this point in time, as Kaiwen can now uh, utilize Iono, is free to attack. Yeah, it's going to be a hard uh, game to come back from, and the clock is ticking, Boo. There's now 45 minutes, and these games take a while. 
Yeah, I mean, that's true. If it goes to uh, one game each, potentially, yeah, it's it's a long way. I mean, we're seeing a ton of single prize Pokemon. We had some double prize Pokemon in there, but I think the main factor for both of these decks is tons of cards are played, are played every single turn. A lot of shuffling happens and a lot of difficult decisions as well for both of our players. But yeah, Andrew Hedrick gonna knock out that Monkey Dory but a little bit more, um, a, a couple more obstacles in Kaiwin's way here now in this match. Three prize cards remain for Andrew Hedrick to take this game one, and Kaiwin only has two left to take in order to be the winner in this first game between our players. Yep, only two left to take. Now, because the Monkey Dury did go down, Kaiwin cannot win this turn. He cannot yeah. double Monkey Dury this turn to get a knocker on the active and on that previously damaged Comfy. But I think he's feeling pretty okay despite not being able to win at this point. Yeah. He just needs to make sure that he can deal with whatever comes active. The highest HP Pokemon could have been that Orsa Luna that's no longer available. I think as long as he plays around the Iron Thorn CX, Kaiwan is going to be fine here. Well, we see a Monkey Dory being drawn out of the deck here. The double nest ball here going down. Uh, and just failing that. I think the Monkey Dory was brought out from the Artisan, I assume, there for Kaiwin. We got an entire look at that deck as well, because both <laughs> these players have very thin decks here. Bravery Charm coming down onto that Manaphy that has a, a damage counter, chilling on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Giving it a little sure. extra HP now. <laughs> yeah, being extra, extra save, also thinning the deck as well. Now, with both Bravery Charms being in play, now a powered up Drifloon cannot take down an Iron Thorn CX. That's true. Um, I mean, but if Iron Thorn CX is in the active, you can't even Psychic Embrace. So it's probably not <laughs> something that's going to happen here. I think it might come down to can Kaiwen find the boss at some point. Andrew probably relying on a Roxanne play to try to make a comeback here. So we'll have to see how this ends up working out. Does hit the Darkness Energy once again. Will be able to transfer even more damage. Evolves. Wow. into the guard of rex and i think kaiwin just wants to have that boss's orders ready to go yeah we're gonna see the iono here from kaiwin kababe as well you draw for as many prize cards as remain for you to take so kaiwin's gonna draw into two here andrew hedrick drawing to three but all of those cards that were in hand are now at the bottom of the deck for each player oh, this is risky business for kaiwin kaiwin seems like he's using monkey dory is he going to leave a guard of RX powered up? It is, or he is going to, uh, which is great, right? That does mean you can still attack the Iron Thorns just in case that happens. I don't even know if all of the three cards Andrew will be able to do that. There's no yeah. supporter, there's no draw, and he's. I'm pretty sure he's out of four switch cards yes. and four switches and the Prime Catcher and the rescue board. Yeah, missing a ton of resources here. Iono brought Andrew's hand ooh. all the way down to three. The to ooh, the top deck off of uh, off the deck there after the promotion was that Roxanne, which of course is unlocked this late in the game. Kaiwen Kababe only being at one prize card left, so could get us a another hand. Yeah, if Andrew's going to have any sort of chance, it is going to be thanks to that. Roxanne does have a lost vacuum, so can thin his hand. I don't know what the plan is, but if it's something's going to happen, it's going to be with the Roxanne. Yeah, I mean, everything is stacked up here for Kaiwan Kababe to take this win, take one last prize card, but Andrew Hedrick going to do everything possible, I guess, against this board state right now. Comfey is going to flower select a buddy buddy puffin away, thinning the deck even more here for Andrew. Did find a lost vacuum, has another one in hand, Suprod, Palpad. None of these cards are too essential. Might want to lost vacuum away, lost vacuum. Replenish the deck with energies with a super or maybe not. And then you hope you find a uh, double Mirage Gate because that's what Andrew needs now to be able to potentially retreat. Does decide to play the super, might try to go for a counter catcher play with the Sableye, try to prevent True. the retreat by bringing up the Mana Fury or the Greninja, which cannot are not psychic Pokemon, therefore you cannot psychic embrace onto yes. them, perhaps. Just trying to come up ways with how uh, Hedrick can come back into this. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're debating the lost vacuum here for Andrew Hedrick, but definitely going to take a look at the deck first off of this Oof. Artisan. <laughs> yeah, take out 
that Sableye, uh, Sableye as well, a non-rule box Pokemon and a basic Pokemon in that Sableye. Yep, now there's just super rotted back as well. Getting the full shuffle here. Are we going to see the Palpat? Are we going to see the Roxanne? Are we going to see the Lost Vacuum? So many things well, happening. We're going to see the Iron Bundle for sure. That's going to allow Andrew Hedrick. I like how it's just chilling now in the discard pile because when it hops away, uh, it allows you to pivot one of your opponent's Pokemon. They get to choose. Cresselia coming up into the active position from Kaiwen. Hyper Blower. Yeah, I forgot the ability name, but here it is on the screen. <laughs> yep, Hyper Blower. That Iron Bundle has been really important in many situations. It has been, yeah. Probably inconsequential at this point in time. Not playing the Lost Vacuums either. So, I mean, Hedrick definitely has a lot of options to just find the Psychic, but he does run the risk of finding too many energies in his hand and then not being able to potentially retreat That's true, that yeah. Comfy if he finds all of them. It's unlikely, but it is still possible. And I don't know how he is going to make a comic here. He didn't even put any lightning energy, so he's just not contemplating the Iron Thorns. Maybe I'm, I'm a little uh, tunnel vision into the Iron <laughs> maybe, Thorns. Maybe. I think that's the only way you deny Psychic Embrace, though. Otherwise, this Cresselia just retreats, and nothing can take a hit from Gardevoir EX. Yeah, I, mean, I can tell you Gardevoir EX has definitely done a future Pokemon, that is for sure. But yeah, Andrew Hedrick going to play this Roxanne here. The comeback card in that Roxanne. Drawing six Ooh. cards. Kaiwin's only going to get two after that Roxanne, after they both shuffled their hands. Pokestop yep. being played here. Boss's orders going down and to Mirage Gate to the hands. Yeah, Hedrick hadn't actually found any Mirage Gate, so wasn't going to be able to... Uh, get an attack going. Will now conceal card. Does find an extra energy, but does have the super rod, so he's gonna be okay in that sense. But sure, you attack with Sableye, and then what? Super rod, yeah, gonna be used here. Getting those energy and Pokemon back into the deck for Andrew Hedrick. I I generally don't know Are what we, like, Hedrick doing math is planning wrong here, or something. <laughs> I, mean, I, missing something? I, I generally don't know. I'm, I'm sure I am because <laughs> I, I don't know. It has been um, a long day. <laughs> Kaiwen is one prize away. Uh, Andrew will retreat. The Comfy go into the Sableye. Well. Will lost vacuum. Uh, the Bravery Charm. So, But this Gardevoir just comes up. I guess he's going to put enough damage counters on the Cresselia to leave it. That, so it can't be powered up? Well, it's going to take... Uh, no. and Andrew Hedrick's going to take down the Monkey Dory here now. Cresselia in the active position here. Yeah, just, just going to retreat out of it thanks to that psychic energy. That's going to be the game. That's it, Pablo. I don't think we we're missing anything here. Andrew Hedrick losing this game. Scores, only means, two. Yeah, no Monkey Dory access until one of those is unlocked from the prize cards. Mana V star, not what you want to see. Yeah, Stabilize star, great. also not what you want to yes. see. But there is <laughs> a body body puffin that will allow Andrew Hedrick to get us going here. Yeah, we're going to be starting things off here on Andrew Hedrick's side. Uh, just under 35 minutes left between these players to get through here. Sableye is the starter Pokemon here, as we talked about in our last game. Uh, in order to use that Lost Mine attack, you have to have 10 cards or more in the Lost Zone. And right now we are at a nice... Zero. So, <laughs> yeah, that is why it's a, it's a bit awkward as a starter, but still not the worst. Buddy Buddy Poppin is going to be played for Andrew Hedrick. So that is going to allow all of these Poke Pokemon to be lined up on the field in these Comfey to start getting some cards into the Lost Zone. Did you see anything in the prize cards, Pablo, that were uh, was too detrimental here for Andrew Hedrick? I generally was too focused on the two dark center, to the two dark yeah. energies, and I completely missed Andrew Hendricks' prizes here. I think there was the Blood Moon. Uh, oh, thank you very much thank you. to <laughs> the producers. Yeah, Blood Moon or Saluna could be troublesome. The Rescue Board, the Mirage Gate, the Switching, the Lightning Energy perhaps. This deck is running the bare minimum eight total basic energy. So honestly, all of the cards could affect, but nothing super major to work. Andrew doesn't have extra copies or a way to unlock the Ursa Luna thanks to that Hizuian Heavy Ball. Exactly. Andrew Hedrick looking through the deck, making sure to map out all of these prize cards 
the resources that he currently does not have access to. Comfey going to be out on the field now. Thanks to that buddy, buddy Poffin. They've had a nice lunch, and they're joining us to uh, have some utility here in this game. Yeah, Pokemon do love their Poffins, don't they? <laughs> that is very true. Uh, well, Comfey going to join us in the active now after that hard retreat on the Sableye, discarding that water energy. We're going to see our first card hit the Lost Zone here. And oh. for a Pokestop, that's going to draw some cards here. All right. And hitting two item cards off of that Pokestop. One being that Ace Spec as well as a Super Rod Pokestop going down into the discard pile off of its own Pokestop here. But that's going to be the turn for Andrew Hedrick to start things off in this game too. Kaiwan Kababe going to start things off over here. Immediately bumping that Pokestop. We're back at the Windmill Town, Pablo. <laughs> Yeah. Artisan coming down, Ralts on the field, energy attachment to that Manaphy into the Iono. Matt Iono almost hurt for Hedrick. He had, I think, two, maybe even three choruses in his hand, which are now at the bottom of the deck. He can shuffle the deck with that very same Artisan, but a lot of good cards at the bottom and yeah. not a lot of good cards in his current hand. Did find Gradient Just, will mm. be able to find extra cards, but not being able to Colorize might not be able to threaten Kaiwen too much, but... We'll see how many routes Kaiwan is able to set up, and most importantly, also trying to set up that mana fee to protect from a potential Radiant Greninja. We've seen Lost Box decks before, right? We saw Andrew yes. Gander get a Radiant Greninja attack off out of the blue. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I mean, I never doubt these decks as far as the surprises that they can provide for us. Maybe we'll see some of those in this matchup between these players. Kaiwen Kababe having a nice little time here, getting a look at all of these prize cards immediately, thanks to that Hisuian heavy ball being played. So assessing the prize cards, making sure to take note, write them all down over on the notepad outside of the screen here. No basic Pokemon to trade out. Uh, for that Hisuian Heavy Ball to switch things up here. But we are going to see some uh, basic Pokemon coming down in that Ralts here for Kaiwen. Yeah, Artisan does have that Technical Machine Evolution to get the beautiful double Kirlia right here. Yes. This card's one of the Technical Machine Evolutions. You gotta assume that there's another Two. copy in the hand. It's just the yeah. hair is getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kaiwen has a nice do there, but it's blocking some of our cards. <laughs> yeah, Earthen Vessel going to discard one of those TMs, but there's another in hand. Manaphy is going to see some utility here, even being the starter Pokemon. It's going to get a nice technical machine, get those Curlia into play here for Kaiwen out of the deck. We're back to Andrew Hedrick's side. Going to go into the deck immediately for that Artisan. And what was the top deck, Pablo? I couldn't really tell what the top deck oh, I was. Thought, I thought you were hyped about it. No, 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 <laughs> I was not. <laughs> I was just thinking how uh, the Mana is currently protecting these double Kirlia really, really well. Yeah. So Iron Hands would be Andrew's ideal Pokemon to follow this up. Now this technical machine does need to go to the discard pile. Yes, it won't I know. stay there they forever. They keep forgetting that. <laughs> it's an yeah. easy thing to forget. It, I think most tools is, yeah. remain in place. Just the technical machines that get immediately discarded after yeah, their yeah. use. Or yeah. at the end of the turn, rather, which yeah, is yeah. usually <laughs> when you use them. Exactly. You put them in the player, and then I guess they pop back out when, when they've been utilized there. So that needs to discard right here. But then we're turning through this turn still. We've seen the concealed cards out from Andrew Hedrick drawing two more cards off of that radio. Greninja's ability here after a discard of that lightning energy Pokestop is going to bump that Artisan. So we're we're Pogo gamers now. Once again, Nest Ball being the debated card here from Andrew Hedrick to be played to get another basic Pokemon. What do you think he's debating, Pablo? I mean, whether to show the Iron Hands mm. before he uses the Iron Bundle. Pokestop does hit two cool resources and didn't hit a Colrus. So now we are closer to the Colrus than we were before. True. I think we're going to see the flower select, but he also needs double Mirage Gate as well in order to pull off this Iron Hands two price knockout. I mean, you can still just go in with the Cramorant and by knocking out the Mana Fee, you apply a lot of pressure and open up the possibility of using Greninja to take down two Kirlias or any other Ralts that end up getting played. But if you can just get to prizes right now, I think that would be the dream. That would be the dream. I would love to see that as well here. But we're going to have to see what happens. Psychic energy going into the loss zone for Andrew Hedrick as well. Oof. 
double Supra, no call risk found for Andrew this turn. So I think it's just gonna be a Cramorant knockout. Does have the prime catcher, so could use Cramorant to take down one of his opponents, Kirilias, which is also pretty decent. Yeah, that's actually not bad at all. I mean, if it's gonna be the Constellation prize, uh, it's not too bad to take it. Yeah. There's Iron Hands that's going to get played. I think we're going to see the attachment going into that. Yeah. That way, next turn, you need one more attachment and only one Mirage Gate instead of two. So I think we are going to see a Cramorant get benched now. Um, we do need to open up the bench space, though. Yeah, so we that, need yeah. to use that Iron Bundle here. Yeah, Iron Bundle has the ability to jump right off the field Ooh. here. No, it's just going to be not a pass gonna be here. Aggressive. Oh, yeah, okay, not okay. going to take the knockout. Interesting right. decision by... Hedrick here just playing it cool. Yeah, I mean, Andrew Hedrick has played a lot of this deck. I trust the decisions here, but we'll yep. have to see how it plays out in the future. Kaiwan Kababe now on this turn did uh, discard a Psychic Energy for that refinement, drawing into a couple more cards here. Looks like debating some difficult decisions, but going to go with this Nest Ball back into the deck. Yeah, probably to establish more Ralts. Yeah, which is pretty great. There's no more technical machine evolution available. He knows the two darkness energy are prized, so getting Monkey Theory here would not be very useful Effective. at all. It would just be, I mean, you could mind bend, right? But you can't really yeah. use it for its adrenaline brain power just yet. Yep. Unfortunately, you do have to have that dark energy attached onto the Monkey Dory in order to move those damage counters around and manipulate the field a little bit. But two dark energy is all that Kaiwan plays. They're in the prize cards. Ralt's going to come down onto the bench here for Kaiwan off that nest ball, of course. Refinement, another uh, psychic energy into the discard pile. Two more cards to the hand. Wish I could see them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish to, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, here we go. Ultra Ball discarding two of those cards out of the hand Drift into the discard and pile. Enhance Hammer. Gardevoir EX can be drawn out. Ultra Ball does allow you to draw out any Pokemon, just takes those two cards uh, being sacrificed to the Ultra Ball. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing ball, though, and that's going to get us the Gardevoir EX here for Kaiwen. Now, this Gardevoir will allow Kaiwen to be the aggressor in this situation, will allow him to get ahead, which is something we saw last game. And then we saw Andrew try to respond with the Iron Hand. So we're seeing a similar situation to yeah, the previous actually, game. It was. And I think, once again, this Gardevoir EX, these Lost Box decks, have no answer to it anymore. There's no Dark-type attacker. Now, the damage does build up on the Gardevoir EX because there's no Monkey Dury, but Kaiwen just pulled a Darkness Energy from his dis from his prize card, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Both Dark Energy were in the prize cards. Now one is in the hand here, being taken off the prize cards from that Comfey knockout there with the Miracle Force from that Gardevoir EX. Six damage counters on that Gardevoir EX now. We saw a pokey stop just now from Andrew Hedrick. The Pokemon Go um, players shining down on Andrew Hedrick because it was a bunch of item cards going into the hands now that are able to be utilized starting off with this Nest Ball. Yep, Nest Ball, what do you think he's going to get? I mean, maybe another Comfy. You already have the Iron Hands in play. There's already a Sableye as well. The Lost Zone is looking a little bit lacking right now. Only slim, three little cards. Slim. Yeah, so we might need to keep selecting some flowers and digging deeper into the deck. We really need to find a call resistor to make something happen. Yeah, I guess it's pretty easy to see how the Lost Zone is so thin without those call versus experiment. Totally makes sense here. So if we could get one of those, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Pablo, <laughs> yep. glad to see what happens. Iron Hands EX does have one lightning energy attached to it. I'm trying to keep track of where all these energies are going, as I'm sure Andrew Hedrick is as well. One of the psychic energy in the list, there's only two in the list, is in the Lost Zone. So we'll keep track of that uh, as well. There's a lightning energy in the discard with a water energy. There's tons of super rods, of course, that Andrew Hedrick uses there's to get those back out. But oh, but it's a psychic energy. That's the other psychic energy. Yes, there's only Brutal. two psychic energies Brutal. in this list, and no. he has to give up on the call risk to keep that psychic energy oh available. My gosh. Yeah, this is where, when you're the lost box player, this is where you would go, oh, yep. no, 
Oh, Pablo. That's horrible to see. The coal is, is the card we needed, but you cannot sacrifice another psychic energy uh, for it. So Colrus's experiment, unfortunately, going to join the Lost Zone, making it the fourth card there off of that flower selecting. And another tough choice here for Andrew Mirashgate, a very oh, valuable a resource, super odd as well. And there's already a super odd in the Lost Zone. What? So two super odds gone out of four, I do believe. So yeah. the resources dwindling. Andrew behind in the prize cards. It's looking grim here, Boo. It is looking grim indeed, no but... No is found. Oh my gosh, yeah, look how many cards are in the hand here for Andrew Hedrick. But yeah, no Colrus. I mean, we did find it. We just couldn't keep it, Pablo. Yeah. We just couldn't keep it. Yeah, we did find the Lost Vacuum, Ooh. though, so that will allow us to get to seven. We'll activate that Mirage Gate and will allow Andrew to make something happen. Well, first we're going to see the Hyper Blower here from that Iron Bundle, opening up that bench space now for Andrew Hedrick. Hyping, uh, hopping back into the uh, discard pile here. Now, this was very important. You want to use a Hyper Blower before you play the Super Rod, before you play the Mirage Gates, before you tell your opponent, hey, look, I'm going to be able to attack with Iron Hands this turn. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Super Rod. Coming down here to recycle three different energy in that cycle, uh, uh, psychic, lightning, and water energy. Going back into the deck here for Andrew Hedrick. Now we're going to see that lost vacuum, Iron Thorns EX, hidden the lost zone, as well as a pokey stop here that was in play, discarding that stadium. Lost zone is up to um, seven. Now we're unlocked here, Pablo. We're online. We are finally online. We have Mirage Gate available to us. We can finally get that Ampu very much going and get to prize cards. Yeah, on the Cresselia, which is probably the least interesting target. There is also the possibility <laughs> to use the Prime Catcher to get two prizes on the Curlia, perhaps. So Andrew has options, but this card of Oryx is still very threatening. Yeah. And Kaiwen will be able to potentially use Monkey Dory to do a sort of similar play exactly. where he's able to transfer some damage this turn to the Iron Hands and attack with Card of Oryx and then knock it out mid turn in his next turn. Yeah, honestly, it was major getting that dark energy off the prize cards for Kaiwen with that single Kumfei knockout on the last turn. Iron Hands now uh, being able to be charged up here from Andrew Hedrick with that Mirage Gate getting these energy onto the field here. A Water going onto the Iron Hands EX uh, is able to place a different type of energy now onto the field as well. Yep, it's got to be that Psychic, which it seems like he's going to choose to attach to the Sableye, possibly going in with that Prime Catcher. I think being down two Super Odds, in the Lost Zone, also being down one uh, Super Odd in his discard pile, one left. He really needs to be extra, extra, hyper, duper, hyper careful <laughs> with where his energies are placed and for what purpose. Yeah, exactly. You need every single utility you can get out of every single one of your cards here. This is going to be the Hisuian Heavy Ball being played by Andrew Hedrick. Going to keep track of all of these other prize cards <laughs> that he maybe missed out on that were in there, writing them all down here, and then exchanging the Hisuian Heavy Ball for this Blood Moon Ursa Luna. So now we've kind of shifted around these prize cards a bit that uh, Ursa Luna is going to come out of the prize cards into Andrew Hedrick's hand, and the Heavy Ball is going to go into the prize cards. Yeah, now I did see him sort of cross out everything he had written before, so maybe he got confused and was oh no, uh, writing really? something different. I know I've made that mistake plenty of times. Like, I write a card down, like uh, Grass Energy, as my only energy in my prize cards, and then I take a prize, and it was the Metal Energy. I'm like, whoops, oh. <laughs> I did something <laughs> wrong. So that can happen, but now he has full confirmation. We'll be able to put back that boss's orders into a deck with the Pulpit, and now it comes down to, will Andrew play his Prime Catcher and which Pokemon is he going to target? Exactly. Prime Catcher, an incredible A-Spec card. You can only put one A-Spec and 
any of your decks here. Prime Catcher is a fantastic one. One of the most popular in the Pokemon trading card game. You select your opponent's Pokemon that they have to bring into the active position, and then you also get to switch your Pokemon. Iron Hands EX being the Pokemon brought up here to take these two prize cards off of Curlia, eliminating that off the field on Kaiwen's side. Leading in the prize race now, Andrew Hedrick, but we saw this in our last game, Pablo. How are things different here as far as from what we were seeing in our last game versus now, uh, versus now like Kai Winkababe's uh, board state versus Andrew Hedrick's, and how could things go differently from our game one? I mean, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot, on the spot, Boo. That's I know. I mean, I know there's, <laughs> but, <laughs> there's also like a billion plays try. that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I think uh, the issue here for Kaiwan is his hand is very underwhelming. There's no Arvin, there's no Iono. He's lacking the Curlias. It's only a Ralt at this point in time, and there's no way to establish yeah. another one. So he's going to get the Monkey Dory. He has the Darkness Energy to threaten the Iron Hands. But... Andrew's going to see that there's no cards drawn, there's no Iono played, sure. and there is no prize taken this turn, so Andrew could take that to his advantage. And also, Andrew still has plenty of switch cards available to him to exactly. heal the damage from the Monkey Dury um, and make something happen for himself as well. Yes. But with the Prime Catcher gone, it's going to be hard for Andrew to take a prize card here. Yeah, that, that was one. Oh, never mind. Oh, I mean, looks like debating it here, trying to math everything out for Kaiwen's yeah. side of the field. But yeah, that was one major factor in our last game, Pablo, that there was a lot of different resources that were used by Andrew Hedrick and Lost Zoned. Now we're dealing with a completely different game here, as you always see with these Lost Box decks. Yeah, now the damage is piling up over on Kaiwen's side of the field but will be removed by that Moonglow Reverse. That Sableye will get taken down. I think Kaiwan also recognizes that there's two Super Odds here. There's one more here, so recovering that Sableye, there's only one True. more chance for Andrew, so he really needs to make something happen with it. Exactly. Everything counts. Everything matters, including these two cards off of concealed cards on that Radiant Greninja. Both were Buddy Buddy Poffin after that Lightning Energy hits the discard pile now. Now there's a big poke gear here. If Hedrick finds that Boss's Orders can possibly take down the Ralts, can possibly amp you very much on the Monkey Dury and get four prizes yeah, ahead that'd be huge. in this game and leave Kaiwen pretty defenseless. So I think Andrew's going to try to thin as much as possible. He had a lot of call resists at the top. The Boss's Orders would have been in range as well. The deck is not very big at this point in time but oh yeah it's a yeah there's the boss's order it's right there. there i saw it i, think I saw would have it seen all his supporters of that poke here but this is the correct way to do it doesn't matter what the result would have been with the poke here this statistically and mathematically correct to do this is get every card out of your deck that you yes. possibly can to maximize the chances of the poke gear hitting exactly but the curiosity always uh, <laughs> eats at you and you always I check know. every player check. Well, especially if, if you're... What if? If, if you whiff it now, too, that'd be <laughs> yeah, horrible, exactly. horrible. But you're going to you're gonna rely on statistics here. Let's see if we can there see it. It is it's there. There's statistics. the boss's orders that Love will it. allow Hedrick to take two more prize cards. He's still debating the call risk, right? He's yeah. lost zone is very thin. His hand is decent, but not great. I can't imagine him picking something different, though. There's the boss's orders. Probably has enough psychic energies in the discard pile, as there's one here, one here, and one here, right? <laughs> to yes. even attack with Guard of Oryx. Yeah, you might be right about that, Pablo. I guess we'll see once we take a look at Kaiwin's uh, discard pile. In a few moments here, Super Rod going to be played by Andrew Hedrick. So is this our fourth Super Rod then? Yeah, that yeah. is the last Super Rod. No more Super Rods available, I believe. Super right? Rod. I could be wrong. No, yeah, I think the, you're right. It's I hard to tell right. with the distance from the cards, but I believe there's two in the Lost Zone, two in the discard pile already played. Yeah, because the last one was uh, played for the three energy yeah. to go back in. So, yeah. yeah, no more Super Rods here. There was four in the deck, and they're all gone now. Now, this might play perfectly to what Andrew planned. Time is running out. Lost oh Box gosh, is the yeah, aggressor, wild. despite the fact that... Um, we have seen uh, Kaiwen be the aggressor each and every time. Now Kaiwen chooses this. to eliminate the Ralts instead of the Monkey Dury. I am I mean, generally <laughs> possible. I'm getting yes. very confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah, Andrew monkey Hedrick is yeah gonna boss his orders that Ralts instead of the monkey door, leaving it on the board here, but still gonna take those two prize cards down. Only two prize cards remain for Andrew Hedrick to take in order to take this game two here between these players. Kaiwan Kababe uh, instantly gonna repower up this Gardevoir EX now and deal all of this damage here with that miracle force 190 damage there onto that iron hands ex of course that monkey dory is still in play as well to shift some of those damage counters onto the board state for andrew hedrick as well yeah i believe there's 10 damage uh missing from that iron hands yeah it's 230 transfer, hp total yeah uh oh yeah there's 220 on the board never mind never mind um, I, no, I was miscounting myself. Good. Yeah, yeah. You said 10. Yeah, you yeah. had it, Pablo. You're good. All right. So then <laughs> switch card will nullify the damage from the Monkey Dory here, allowing uh, Iron Hands to survive yet another turn, probably arm pressing the active and then being one turn away possibly from winning. Uh, there's the Iron Bundle as well, which can't win the game right now. Would need to find a lost vacuum, assuming Kaiwen is going to promote the... Cresselia to the active in case the Iron Bundle does get utilized. Well, we s we're seeing once again what we saw in our previous game between these players. These switch carts are coming out now, healing off some of this damage that the Iron Hands EX yep. had here. We're also going to see these flowers selecting, of course, and that is, I believe, what just there netted us this Colrus's experiment. You got it, Pablo. Yeah, the lost vacuum is found, so... Andrew, I believe, will be able to walk away. The winner, I think, he's so nervous that he's just <laughs> making sure that he doesn't misplay. But Iron Bundle sent the Guard of War back, promotes the Cresselia, lost vacuums away the Cresselia, and there's going to be the win. Andrew just going to be very thorough with everything he does and going to make sure maybe I'm missing something yep. because he's not doing it yet. But I think that's how you win. <laughs> I think so, too, Pablo. And I think we are definitely there here now for Andrew Hedrick. Gonna see Mirage Gate in the deck even more. There are two energies left. There's another lost vacuum for good measure, just in case. Yeah, Andrew just making sure that he's gonna do everything he possibly can in order to. Uh, before he wins. I mean, we saw this in the last game as well here. We're seeing uh, this second Humphe come into the active position. Now, Colrus's experiment hitting the loss zone here for Andrew Hedrick. Um, switch cart being played here now into another Humphe. Okay, switch yeah. going to the loss zone. All right, all right. Yep, there's the switch. There's the bundle. There's the... Lost vacuum, slowly but surely. There's the switch. Slowly but surely There's here. the lost vacuum, getting rid of the thing. So, yeah, uh, Andrew Hedrick just wanted to do every single action possible in order to... A pokey stop, a pokey gear, rescue board. Nothing too crazy, I would say. Maybe some buddy-buddy uh, poffin uh, that could hinder Kaiwen potentially here, depending on what the initial start is is for Kaiwen as far as the hand goes. Artisan is in play immediately here from Kaiwen's side of the field, and that is at least going to get us one of these Ralts as well as a check here into the deck. Yeah, I'm going to be very thorough with his price checking as usual, but the clock is ticking. Now, Kaiwen has been able to get ahead in the prices each of the previous games, and Iron Hands is definitely not the starter you want to see as Andrew, but Kaiwen has not used Drifflin at all. He's always tried to deal with Iron Hands through Guard of Oryx. We'll have to see, assuming he has a decent enough setup, how he handles this situation under the time pressure. Yeah, there is definitely time pressure there. Eight minutes left on the clock between both of these players. I mean, I knew things were going to go pretty long, but... This is uh, definitely pretty long here, Pablo, that is <laughs> for sure. Kaiwen Kababe, that's the setup here. Just an artisan being played, not a single card hitting the discard pile for that initial turn. Manaphy is the active Pokemon at the moment, as well as just a single Ralts on the bench. Andrew Hedrick, on the other hand, has the Iron Hands EX in the active position to start us off, and a Buddy Buddy Poffin of his own to start things off. Two of them are in the prize cards, unfortunately, for Kaiwen. Yeah, to win the prize cards. I believe the Cramorant was as well. I couldn't quite see if it's available here. Um, 
I mean, when you only have one Ralts, you open your, up yourself to a potential Colrez, Iron Bundle, Cramorant, Knockout on your only Pokemon. Iron Bundle ends up becoming even better than Prime Catcher sometimes. And that would be crazy to see here. And I think that's what Hedrick yes. is trying to do. He knows his deck is aggressive. He's had decently underwhelming starts overall. Don't see a Colrez in his hand. Yeah, I think the Cramorant's priced. Yeah, genuinely, I, I think Iron Bundle is uh, just MVP Pokemon in general, Pablo. I should have picked that. Forget Teal Mask, yeah. Ogre Pond. Get out of here. Iron Bundle's a real <laughs> MVP here. I mean, we've just seen so much utility from this little Pokemon all weekend long. So if you don't have a bundle in your deck, you should definitely rethink oh. things sometimes. The Cramorant is actually in the hand, so there is a possibility oh, okay. to... Yeah, um, I was going to say, I don't think do I saw play. it in the yeah, price yeah. cards at all. It's in the hand. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been able to <laughs> take a look at the hand fully. We're going to see the Artisan next. See, that might get the bundle, I'm guessing. Yep, there's yeah, the bundle. Yeah, here we go, a little and robot. And it's going to bring a bundle of joy to Hedrick, but not so much to Kaiwen. <laughs> yes, that is for sure here. The bundle of joy being brought onto the bench here for Andrew Hedrick. We're going to see all the utility it provides in that Hyper Blower here after we uh, progress through this turn. First for Andrew Hedrick. We're two minutes down now from where we started off this match here. And shuffling up the deck. Going to play through the rest of this turn. Lots of cards yeah. um, to be played here. Colors' experiment. Andrew Hedrick going second in this matchup here. Supporters Oof. unlocked to play. That's going to be... Um, Difficult decision here for Andrew Hedrick. Yeah. Lots of good cards, but I guess that's that's why you're uh, you're playing the deck you're playing, huh? It's filled with good, great cards. <laughs> Couple difficult decisions here, but overall, Hedrick has the perfect combination. Yes. To get the knockout on that Ralts has enough ways to switch, and will be able to take down Kaiwen's only Ralts in play, yes. and now he will be the one that's ahead. No way for Kaiwen to respond. He will have access to that um, unfair stamp on turn two, which is probably when it's the that's most true, unfair. Yeah. yeah, so if Kaiwen's going to make a comeback, that's going to be how he does it. Exactly. Buddy Buddy Poppin hitting the Lost Zone. We're up to Oof. three now. Second um, flower selecting is going to get us to four. What's the decision here, Pablo? Yeah, tough decision again. Oh. Colrez and Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher is such an important reason, but Colrez is a great way to follow this up. Andrew is already very close to having the Iron Hands amp you very much next turn, which yeah. would put him even it's further huge. ahead. He doesn't know about the unfair stamp just yet. He's going to find out uh, the bad way, of course. Yeah, but very soon. <laughs> eliminating your opponent's lone routes when there's less than five minutes on the clock that's how you get to the final. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that is just detrimental here, and it's being dealt, unfortunately, to Kaiwen Kavave on the other side here. So that uh, that Kumpe is going to the bench. Uh, the Hyper Blower, I keep forgetting that move, Pablo. <laughs> Hyper Blower is going to be enacted here. Ralts is up in the active now for Kaiwen. Cramorant is online. That Lost Provisions ability unlocking this spit innocently of its attack for free here pablo knocking out that ralts going down a single prize card for andrew hedrick and a lot of potential for these future turns here less than four minutes on the clock between these players yeah we're gonna see no price checking this time pretty much for kaiwen no rearranging off the deck we're just seeing the body body puffins the artisan we might just see the uh, technical machine evolution come out immediately. We might see the on first stamp, I'm guessing, to try to deny resources. If Kaiwen doesn't, yeah, it looks like he won't. So Andrew that. might be able to power up Iron Hands this coming turn. I think he needs another Mirage Gate yeah. and uh, an extra card in the Lost Zone. So a way to switch, which he just Ooh, top decked. Ooh, the switch card. Yeah, I mean, this hand's pretty uh, pretty stacked here for Andrew yeah. Hedrick. It generally is. Has a call res, has... Uh, so many ways he's missing and that second yeah. rash gate. That's the key, and he's going to start off with the thinning of the Artisan. Yeah, we're always talking about statistics here. The more cards you take out of your deck that you don't want to draw, the more uh, options you and statistically um, chance, statistical chance you have to draw into the cards you do want. So this is huge. Uh, as well as getting that little bundle baby back on the field. <laughs> we're back in action here. A little robot joining us once again. 
Yeah, Andrew just not trying to uh, deal with that mana. He just wants to make sure he attacks anything else. Anything yes. else is more viable. The Cunelius, the Ralt, or even the Cresselia with Ampia very much would be huge. Well, we'll see what we get off this Pokey stop here. Discard, discard, Oof. and a Mirage Gates being the, the only item. Gate. Kate, There's uh, now two Mirage Gates, boo. I know, yeah. I think... Andrew's one card away. He has Colrus to get to six, has switch card to get to seven, but then needs a way to get the Comfy out of the active. And there's energy, there's switch oh card. Oh my gosh. Andrew Hedrick is about to take two yes. more prize cards with Ampio very much. Andrew Hedrick just doing Andrew Hedrick things at this point in this game. Pablo drawing into these perfect cards here. Switch cards going to be played down for Andrew, bringing this Comfy into the active position. Only six in the loss zone now, but that's about to be seven. Yep, gonna be seven, the perfect number. Uh, tough choice once again. Super out, obviously valuable switch. All they're also very valuable to make sure that you can continue to flower select over and over. But now we are at seven. Mirage Gate is online. There is, there are enough energies in the deck, I do believe. So Ampy very much gonna take down this mana V and put Andrew Hedrick almost Oof. out of reach for Kaiwen. Exactly. First Mirage Gate being played right now. Lightning energy, psychic energy being accelerated out of the deck here onto this Iron Hands EX. Less than, or pretty much a minute left on the clock here for these players, and things are just slipping away here for Kaiwen. Unfortunately, Iron Hands EX in the active position now, and we're seeing that additional Mirage Gate here. This is what Andrew Hedrick needs to get these energy, power up this Iron Hands EX, and take out this uh, knockout. Yeah, he's even going to palp it back. Two colors experiment just in case there's a, a non first stamp or an Iono heading his way. There's less than one minute on the clock, Boo. Can Kai uh, overcome th a three price deficit with two turns? I don't. Uh, it's looking know. really unlikely. Uh, yeah, I would say so too. Very unlikely indeed. It's going to be the knockout there on that mana fee for Andrew Hedrick. Kaiwen is now going to use the unfair stamp here, but maybe too late, <laughs> Pablo? <laughs> maybe a little too late? Yeah, I would have loved to see him use it the previous turn. Andrew had a very big hand. He was The Iron Hand was already in play, yeah, right? That's yeah. the problem you started with. So decreasing the chances of this happening might have given him a way to maybe take two prizes, maybe take a third. But being three prizes down... Uh, not enough energies in the discard pile. A bravery charm here, meaning there's only one bravery charm left. And I do believe time has been called as we see Kaiwen signal exactly. the turns happening. Exactly. Okay, so this is turn zero then? Yep, this okay. will be turn zero. Andrew will be turn one. Kaiwen will be turn two. And Andrew will close this game. So even if Kaiwen somehow manages to tie things up, Andrew will get another turn to get ahead once again. Exactly. Three additional turns between both of these players, but Kaiwen is still going to play things out now, being turn zero here, starting us off with this Nest Ball, getting this Radiant Greninja out of the deck onto the field here now. And we've seen the first uh, initial refinement from Kaiwen as well, a discard of that Drifloon into the discard pile here. Are you kind of surprised we haven't really seen a Drifloon at all either, Pablo? Uh, I mean... It's not a, a part little, of the strategy, yeah. I guess. I mean, it's a great way to deal with Iron Hands, but it also leaves you very susceptible to a Sableye Retaliation True. because the Drivelin will be heavily damaged, and therefore you could open up yourself to a two-price turn. So it's understandable, um, but at this point in time, you're in desperation mode, yeah. so you True. need to make something happen here. Well, Arvin is going to make something at least happen here. Bravery Charm and an Earthen Vessel coming out of the deck off of that Arvin, searching it out here for Kaiwen. Yeah, now Kaiwen did find the Garden Warrior X, does have enough energies available, I do believe, and has Countercatcher. So with Countercatcher, you can probably take down this Iron Bundle, prevent Iron Hands from wrecking any more havoc onto his field, and cannot take down the Garden Warrior X. And then if he follows that up with a knockout on the Iron Hands somehow, then Kaiwen would tie things up. 
Yeah, that is true, Pablo. I guess we could see this game get even more interesting than it already has been so far. Uh, and that's, a, that's definitely a tall, a tall order to ask because this has been incredible to watch, uh, but definitely tiring. And I'm sure it totally is for you too as well, Pablo. You've been doing a lot of math here tonight. <laughs> I have been <laughs> mathing a lot today. <laughs> Thanks for taking that, <laughs> that burden here off of me. No worries, I got you, boo. <laughs> well, Concealed Cards is going to draw two additional cards here for Kaiwen after discarding that Psychic Energy into the discard pile here. Yeah, still has that counter-catcher option. There's just, Kaiwen needs like a couple extra turns. Does focus yes. up away his boss's orders. Does have a Palpat, I believe, to potentially put it back in. No, there's no Palpat in the deck. So boss's oh. orders is He's now gone. officially gone this game. Yeah, that's true. That was the only uh, boss's orders and... Now it's in the discard pile, so one less resource, I suppose, for Kaiwen Kababe to maybe make something happen here. Asking which. Um, oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, we were listening to Andrew Hedrick speak there. I don't know if y'all um, heard, but they're trying to determine which of these were evolved yeah. uh, this turn versus the other ones to that decide ones which one. Play, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which one can actually evolve after a full rotation into this Gardevoir EX. But it looks like that's figured out here. Gardevoir EX in the active position now here for Kaiwen Kababe. That ability unlocked here. Yeah, still also has, I believe, his attachment for turn to be able to use Monkey Dory. So, I mean, yeah, we could true. also see Kaiwen just do 190, transfer three damage counters to this Iron Hands and knock it out in the middle of the turn and then attack with Gardevoir as it tanks the hit. So there is that option and that would tie things up for Kaiwen in his next turn. So, oh, but he gives That's up. That's it, Kaiwen Kababe? There's yeah. no end, not enough energies. I, I'm, I must have been missing something. Oh, yeah, either but. way, Kaiwen Kababe is going to resign here to Andrew Hedrick. Andrew Hedrick taking the win here in our first top four game and advancing into our final.